goes on, ready to begin. Come on in. Welcome tonight. Come on in. Glory to God. Come on in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in. Welcome tonight to Journey Through the Word. Glory to God. Come on in. Welcome to Journey Through the Word tonight. Come on in. Invite and share. Good evening. Come on in. Just begin to invite and share. Welcome tonight to Journey Through the Words. Lucinda, Anita, hello, welcome tonight. Minister TJ, Minister Dolores, good evening. Anita, hello, my love. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to see you all on tonight. Come on in. It's the Holy Spirit, you are welcome. You can find your place here. You can settle down here. You can rest. So come on in. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know if y'all know that one of the words for rest uh, in the Hebrew, it kind of means to settle down here. Like rest means settle here. It means to dwell in. Hallelujah. So come on in. Hello, 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 hello. Welcome everyone. Welcome to Journey Through the Word tonight. Again, it's good to see you all on. I trust that the goodness of God has been good to you today. I trust that he has been keeping you. Oh yes, I trust that you have 
it has been a rich day in the wisdom of God. So come on in. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Tonight, we are going to be in the book of Proverbs chapter 3. We're going to start in Proverbs chapter 3 tonight. So that will be page 634. So come on in, page 634, uh, Proverbs. Go ahead and say, Word of God, speak to me. And go ahead and say, supernaturally, unlock my understanding tonight. To, so I can receive the revelation of the scripture. Hallelujah. So Holy Spirit, have your way. Settle down here. You can rest here. You can take your place here. Hallelujah. And tonight we're finding rest in his presence. We're finding rest in his word. So go ahead and settle down. Settle your mind down. Settle your thoughts down. Just come on in. Welcome. Welcome to Journey Through the Word tonight. Again, we are in the book of Psalm, uh, Proverbs tonight, uh, chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. Welcome, uh, Innocent. Welcome to Journey Through the Word. Welcome. Glad to have you on tonight. Uh, we are reading through the book of Proverbs tonight. Yes, we desire the revelation of the scripture tonight. Hallelujah. So, Father, we just thank you and we glorify you tonight. God, we honor you and give you the highest praise tonight. Lord, we welcome you to invade our homes and invade our hearts and invade our space, Father. We pray, God, like a mighty rushing wind, Lord, that you would just, you would just begin to fill our atmosphere, our cultures, Lord, just begin to shift the atmosphere. Lord, I pray a special, a special anointing over their reading space tonight, over their homes tonight, Lord, where they, uh, some are coming from work and some are running and some are doing different errands, but Lord, as they make their way into that place to settle down and to commune with you. Lord, I, I pray, Lord, that you would bless, you would bless them. Open the eyes of their understanding tonight. Open their ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us tonight. So, Lord, we pray for your guidance and for your wisdom. So, Father, we thank you. And we say, Word of God, speak. We are listening. We are listening. In the mighty name of Jesus. So come on in, come on in, come on in. Guys, as we are going uh, through the book of Proverbs tonight, um, I want us to just understand that the book of Proverbs is meant to be um, to our practical life what the book of Psalms is to our devotional life. Um, this is a book of divine wisdom and um, it's applied to earthly conditions. It is a book of divine wisdom applied to earthly conditions. Come on, come on in tonight. Welcome. Um, when we talked, we talked a little bit about what a, a proverb was, and we said it means it's a brief saying. Instead of saying many words, it's a very brief saying. So they're short statements drawn from long experiences. So if you could just sum up some of the things uh, sometime that you want to say, you might come up with these little quotes and these little slogans, these little uh, meaningful sayings. And so Proverbs will remind you of a lot of short statements drawn from long life experiences. A proverb does not argue. Um, it does not debate. It just states the fact. And it assumes you already in Christ and you already should know better. <laughs> it, I love that. It assumes that you already know better. <laughs> welcome tonight. Uh, welcome, Destiny. Come on in. The author, tell Jarrell to get his Bible and come on, read Proverbs with me. The author, Solomon is the writer of the next three books. He is the writer of Proverbs. He is the writer of Ecclesiastics. He is the writer of the Songs of Solomon. So as we're going through this, let's just keep these things in mind that Solomon has scribed these things. Um, then uh, the central message of the book of Proverbs 
it says that there is 917 proverbs that is in this book and hold on y'all know i used to love giving y'all these let me see if i can find you it real quick just for old time's sake let me see if i can give it to you come on in welcome tonight to journey through the word he in the book of genesis <laughs> come on jerelle so I used to, last year when we would read these books, every night I would give statistics of the books. So I'm just going to do one for tonight from Proverbs. Um, so if we did statistics about the book of Proverbs, we would understand that in the um, original Bible, it is the 20th book of the Bible. It has 31 chapters. There's 915 verses in the book of, um, uh, 915 verses in the book of Proverbs, 15,043 words, nine, 49 questions, and I used to love doing this because I'm like, look for the questions, look for the questions, 49 questions, 27 verses of unfulfilled prophecy, there's 67 sins, 67 sins, 66 things about fools, 66 things about fools. 28 things about sluggards, 22 things about kings, 25 abominations, 215 commands, 120 promises, 27 blessings, 24 secrets of life. I want to find all those. It says 24 secrets of life. Y'all help us. Let somebody help me find the secrets of life. It said 24 secrets of life and 27 blessings. I want the blessings. I want the, the secrets of life. It said and 17 better things. 17 better things. And there's 560 proverbs. 560 Proverbs in all. Amen. That was some good stuff. That was some good stuff. So as we come into the book of Proverbs, come on in. It talks about the structure of the book of um, Proverbs. Just give you a little bit about Proverbs uh, as we go through it. It deals with wisdom and folly. Um, there is different writers in the book of Proverbs that we'll hear some of some of their wisdom compiled also inside of the book of Proverbs. And it'll be words of agar and words of a mother. And some would be um, compiled by men of Hezekiah, but that's further on in the book of Proverbs. But so that just gave you a little bit about Proverbs. But what I want to tell you again about Proverbs is dealing with the form of the Proverbs. So the book of Proverbs say things, um, as you have noticed in short repeat or backup statements. So this is called parallelism. So you'll see a whole bunch of parallelism. Three kinds of parallelisms are pointed out. So it's going to talk about three different type of parallelisms. So let's look at that. Um, you got synonymous parallelism. And synonymous parallelism is, um, it kind of, it's a second clause that restates what is given in the first clause. So it's a second clause that is that restates what is given in the first clause. Then you have contrast parallelisms. And a contrast parallelism is a truth that's stated in the first clause, but is made stronger in the second clause. So by contrast with an opposite truth. So it's... A truth stated in the first clause made it stronger in the second clause, uh, clause by contrast of an opposite truth. Okay? And then number three, there is synthetic or completative parallelism. 
And that is the second clause develops the thought of the first clause. So, you know, sometimes you hear stuff and you be like, hmm. And then it keep going and you be like, oh, because it made sense as you read more into it. So that would probably be the completative, the synthetic, the second clause develops the thought of the first, right? Y'all throw me some thumbs up if you're still with me. All right, so let's look into, let's look into our Psalms tonight. Uh, Pro Proverbs chapter three, I keep calling this Psalms. Proverbs chapter three. Hey, Amen, there go those thumbs coming up. Yes, Proverbs chapter three. Verse one, it says, my child, never forget the things I have taught you. Store my commands in your heart. If you do this, you will live many years and your life will be satisfying. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. So you can see the little short clauses that just got so much meaning in them. Then you will find favor with both God and people, and you will earn a good reputation. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all that you do, and he will show you which path to take. Verse 7, don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Then you will have the healing for your body and strength for your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Glory to God. Then he will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. My child, don't reject the Lord's discipline and don't be upset when he corrects you. For the Lord corrects those he loves just as a father corrects a child in whom he delights. Joyful is the person who finds wisdom, the one who gains understanding. For wisdom is more profitable than silver and her wages are better than gold. Precious than rubies. Hmm. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Verse 16. She offers you long life in her right hand and riches and honor in her left. She will guide you down delightful paths all her ways are satisfying. Wisdom is a tree of life to those who embrace her and happy are those who hold her tightly. By wisdom, the Lord founded the earth. By understanding, he created the heavens. Glory to God. By his knowledge, the deep fountains of the earth bust, burst forth and the dew settles beneath the night sky. My child, don't lose sight of common sense and discernment. Hang on to them, for they will refresh your soul. They are like jewels on a necklace. They keep you safe on your way and your feet will not stumble. Thank you, Lord. You can go to bed without fear. You will lie down and sleep soundly. I, I receive that. You need not be afraid of sudden disaster or the destruction that comes upon the wicked. For the Lord is your security. Thank you, Lord. He will keep your foot from being caught in a trap. 
Do not withhold good from those who deserve it. When it's in your power to help them. Verse 28. Welcome, uh, Dolores. We are in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 28. If you can help your neighbor now, don't say come back tomorrow and then I'll help you. Don't plot harm against your neighbor. For those who live nearby, you, near, nearby trust you. Woo. Don't pick a fight without reason when no one has done you harm. Come on in, Charlotte and Erica. We are in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 32, page 635. Don't envy violent people or copy their ways. Such wicked people are detestable to the Lord, but he offers his friendship to the godly. The Lord curses the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the upright. The Lord mocks the mockers, but is gracious to the humble. The wise inherit honor, but fools are put to shame. Proverbs chapter 4. A father's wise advice. My children, listen when your father corrects you. Pay attention and learn good judgment. For I am giving you good guidance. Don't turn away from my instructions. Thank you, Lord. For I too was once my father's son, tenderly Loved as my mother's only child. Verse 4. My father taught me, take my words to heart. Follow my commands and you will live. Get wisdom. Develop good judgment. Don't forget my words or turn away from them. Don't turn your back on wisdom. For she will protect you. Love her. She will guard you. Getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. And whatever else you do, develop good judgment. If you prize wisdom, she will make you great. Embrace her and she will honor you. She will place a lovely wreath on your head. She will present you with a beautiful crown. My child, listen to me. Do as I say, and you will have a long, good life. I will teach you wisdom's ways and lead you in straight paths. Verse 12. Come on in, Sharon. We are in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 12. Page 636, if you're reading from the Chronological Bible. Verse 12, when you walk, you won't be held back. When you run, you won't stumble. Take hold of my instructions. Don't let them go. Guard them, for they are the key to life. Glory to God. Don't do as the wicked do. Don't follow the path of evildoers. Don't even think about it. Don't go that way. Turn away and keep moving. Keep moving. For evil people can't sleep until they're done their evil deed for the day. They can't rest until they cause someone to stumble. They eat the food of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. Verse 18, the way of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn, which shines ever brighter until the full light of day. But the way of the wicked is like total darkness. They have no idea what they are stumbling over. My child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart for they bring life to those who find them and healing to their whole body. Glory to God. Ooh. 
don't lose sight of them. It said, let it penetrate into your heart for it. They bring life to those who find them and healing to your whole body. Verse 23, guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of your life. Avoid all perverse talk. Stay away from corrupt speech. Look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path, glory to God, for your feet. Stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. Good evening. Come on in tonight. We're in Proverbs chapter 5. Look at um, your chart. <clears throat> it gives you this chart. It says strategy for effective living. And to show you right there that strategy for effective living begins with God's wisdom. And then to tell you respecting and appreciate who God is, reverence and awe towards God. So it begins with God's wisdom. It requires moral application. So it requires you trusting in God and in his word allowing his word to speak to us personally being and being willing to obey. And so, you know, guys, this whole thing about application, more application, is we can sit here and we can read this year after year, day after day, and it can just become a hobby for you or it could just become a ritual for you, for you to just sit a trophy on your shelf and say, I read the Bible I read the Bible every year. But it's another thing when you apply application. So it said you have to allow this word to speak to you personally. Like, so when you read the word of God or you hear the word, preach word of God, sometimes we can be so arrogant to be like, yep, so-and-so need to hear this word or yep, ooh, he talking to so-and-so or Ooh, so-and-so need to be here. No, every word that you hear, you need to be seeking to apply it to your life personally. How do this apply to me today? What can I take away from it today? What can I, how can I add application to this morally? How do this change the way I think? How do this change my behavior? How does this change how do I apply this in my relationships? So we have to, we literally have to think this through so we don't just become accustomed to sitting down, reading the word, because if we don't apply it, guys, this ain't no more than a good old book club, okay? This, this We can just make this a good old book club, and we don't want to just be a book club. We want to be a spirit field, a spirit field group of people where the, 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 the living word of God is active and alive and quicker and sharper than a two-edged sword, rightly dividing, piercing to asunder, quenching our thirst, baptizing us over and over and over again in filling us and infusing us with the fire of God and the Holy Spirit of God over and over and over again being filled being, being smeared the Holy Ghost smearing anointing on your head night after night where it said and he anoints my head with oil it's personal it's personal. So this, this ain't just a book club to me. Now, I don't know what you put it into your category. But when I come every night, I'm looking to walk away with something that's going to trans, that's transforming me before your very eyes. I'm being transformed before your very eyes. There's some nights I come on here and I'm like, woo. 
that word is brewing in me. And when I go lay down at night, that word is brewing in me and it, it's working in me. And sometimes I can't go to sleep because now I went into worship and I'm singing and I'm worshiping. And I get up in the morning and I'm worshiping. That word is still working in me. And so it's the Holy Ghost is working in me. And so when I go to work, I still got that word brewing in my soul. And so I got to make sure that when I go to to, to do anything that is flowing out of me. So we, we have to make it personal. We have to be willing to obey it. We have to be willing to apply it. We have to be willing to start trying to change. Be like, oh, that's me. I do that. It ain't right. I need to work on that. Matter of fact, I'm going to start tonight. I'm going to start tomorrow. So guys, we have to it requires moral application. It requires practical application. Daily. Daily. It's that acting on God's direction daily. Daily. Acting on God's direction daily. In other words, I don't just hear what it is saying. I am doing what it is saying. I am, I am a doer of the word of God daily. Daily. This is not nothing that we put on and that we pick up. This is not a book that we put back on the shelf after this is over. This is no, this is my life. This is my livelihood. This is who I am. This is the air that I breathe. It's, uh -huh. it's the air that I breathe. It says, if you begin with God's wisdom, respecting and appreciating who God is and reverencing him, if you, if you apply moral application and trust in God and in his word and allow that word to work in you and speak to you personally and then you're willing to obey it. It says, and then if you if you do the practical application by acting on it daily, following the directions and trying to walk this thing out, it said it will result in effective living. You will experience what God does with our obedience you will experience the blessings of obedience. You will experience the bless. Uh, we talking about cause and effect now. Cause and effect. Cause and effect. If I do what it says, it's going to impact my life. If I do what it says, I'm going to experience the blessings of God. If I do what it says, it's going to result in God responding. Glory to God. Chapter 5. Avoid immoral women. And when it's talking about this immoral woman, the immoral woman is a prostitute. So Proverbs includes many warnings against um, sex for several reasons. First, a prostitute's charm is used as an example of any temptation to do wrong or to lead the pursuit of wisdom. Second, sexual immorality of any kind was and still is extremely, extremely dangerous because it destroys family life, erodes a person's ability to love, degrades human beings and turns them into objects, it can lead to disease and can result in unplanned children. And the third sexual immorality is against God's law. So guys, a lot of times when I look at this, we can look at this too in the practical, but we also can look at the spiritual and look about this, the spirit of prostitute. Because a lot of times when we look at ourselves as being the bride of Christ, a lot of times we can prostitute ourselves to a lot of different things, which means we can we can allow 
we can find ourselves being charmed and being seduced by a lot of different things too that cause us to prostitute ourselves. So, you know, when we look in, about this, this whole prostitution, it's talking about how dangerous it is, how it rules. And then I got my personal feelings about this whole sexual immorality of any kind because it talked about how it destroy families. And, you know, that was one of the key components, you know, when I got a divorce of the whole immoral immorality of sexual just again it destroys family life it destroys when they say family just don't impact the husband and the wife it impacts children so when people go through divorce it don't just destroy them it mess up children right so when it just talk about this how this spirit is dangerous the immoral woman it, it says, it's talking about it's, it destroys family life. It rolls a person's ability to love and degrades human beings. Like this whole, this whole immorality thing, like if you look at TV, I mean, it's so vivid, so extreme, so in the, like, the level that people will do to expose and do things in public view and the thing, the, the immorality of like it, the world is so naked now like it's there's no shame there's no no shame there's there's no respect for the body no respect for marriage no respect no respect for uh, even if you're trying to keep yourself holy and pure, people don't even respect that no more. You doing what? You trying to keep what? Like the immorality is so, it has so heightened itself. The, we, our city is just so perverted. Our country is so perverted. This spirit is just loose. It's in every song. It's in, I mean, you can just, I mean, you feel raped listening to the music. Yeah, no modesty. That's a good word. There, you feel raped listening to the music. It's just no immorality is in the songs. They they talking about your your, your private parts and your. I mean, you by the time you get done listening, to something you just be like, oh, like you just it's all over. It's just it's destructive. It erodes. It destroys. It's disrespectful. And because it's everywhere, it's on the TV screens, it's everywhere. So our children are learning it. And we got kids at early age. Like if you just look on Facebook, every little video, everybody humping, you know, everybody twisting and twerking. You two years old, why is you throwing your body like that? Why? You know, in every video you scroll scroll by, they, everybody twirling and swirling and, you know, throwing their body all over the place. And it's just like, this is just so, like, what happened to the respect? And so it just talks about this immoral woman. So when we're talking about this immoral woman, we're not just looking at women. I want you to know that this immoral woman is a spirit okay it's a spirit it's on when i say it's a spirit even though we're talking about the woman this spirit dwells in men and women <laughs> it's a spirit so you see men who the uh, same thing to prostitute themselves to different things so let's look at the scripture and, and i want your eyes to be wide open uh to hear what the spirit of the lord is saying about this a moral woman. I said, my son, pay attention to my wisdom. Listen carefully to my wise counsel. We're in Proverbs chapter five, verse one. My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Listen carefully to my wise women. My wise counsel. Verse two, then you will show discernment. Woo! And your lips will express what you've learned. For the lips of an immoral woman are as sweet as honey. Her mouth is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is as bitter as poison. 
So just look at this. Yes, Therese, the spirit of whoredom. Just look at this spirit. And it's just talking about how smooth she is. You know what I'm saying? And when I think about how smooth, it says she's smoother than oil. But in the end, she's bitter as poison, as dangerous as a double-edged sword. I think about, even when we're talking about this thing, how smooth it is. Just think about the TV screen. You can honestly be sitting there trying to watch a football game. I'm just trying to watch a football game. Or you're just trying to watch an episode of Jerry and the Kids. Who knows what you're watching? And you can just honestly be sitting there. And before you know it, they done slipped in in morality and this thing. And next thing you know, all this is in the TV. It's in the commercials. It's, it, it, they, they, they take and ruin an innocent child movie. And did, did you just have to put that in there? Like... It just, it said just slides right on in, right? They slide it into the cartoon. They slide it into the commercials. They slide it into the food. Just like, how do you make eating a, a food commercial so seductive? Why is the woman naked? Why is, why are you in bed eating food? You advertising food. Why do you got to be naked in the bed? You know, so you just, <laughs> it says, it said, for the lips of a moral woman are as sweet as honey, and her mouth is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is bitter as poison, as dangerous as a double-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lead straight to the grave. For she cares nothing about the path to life. She staggers down a crooked trail and doesn't realize it. So now, my son, listen to me. It's like you need discernment. In other words, you need discernment because this thing is smooth. Never stray from what I am about to say. Stay away from her. Don't go near the door of her house. If you do, you will lose your honor and will lose to merciless people all you have achieved. Like this, this thing... It's like you can play with it if you want and it will destroy you. Verse 10, strangers will consume your wealth and some else, someone else will enjoy the fruit of your labor. In the end, you will groan in anguish when disease consumes your body. You will say how I hated, how I hated discipline. If only I had not ignored all the warnings. Woo, guys, you know, we, sometimes, sometimes people buck against discipline. Ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. We just don't like discipline. But it's, she said, oh, how I hated discipline. If only I had not ignored all the warnings. Verse 13. Oh, why didn't I listen to my teachers? Why didn't I pay attention to my instructors? I have come to the brink of utter ruin. And now I must face public disgrace. Verse 15 said, drink water from your own well. <laughs> Share your love with on, only with your wife. Why spill the water of your springs in the streets? Having sex with just anyone. Lord, let's take some breaks here. It, do you hear how it just, do you hear how it just say, why are you spilling your water? just in the streets like like your, the water of your springs you know spring water good too by the way so they're like well, why are you spilling your good water in the streets like just throwing your and so we again we go getting away from the fact of talking about purity being pure being whole being with one wife is saying, stay with your wife, keep yourself, staying with one man, just keeping yourself pure. And I know in this society, we, we kind of pride ourselves on how many women you done been with or how many you done got with or how, how, who all you can, attention you can get. It's like, y'all about to excuse what I'm about to say. If you don't get your little whoredom spirit somewhere and sit down, like, it's like, there ain't nothing cute about that. 
Ain't nothing cute about you uncovering your body. Ain't nothing cute about you running around with your breasts out. Ain't nothing cute about you showing your, wearing your clothes so tight that people can read all your mail. Ain't nothing cute about none of that. Actually, you are looking like a prostitute, okay? And the spirit of whoredom is sitting right on your forehead, right there. Just You just look like a little hoe, okay? Did I say that? Y'all, excuse me. It... Let it said, why men, women, why are you spilling yourself in the streets having sex with just anybody? Why? I, I love that it's called to attention. Why? Like, let's go back to purity. Right, there we go, Sharon. Doers. You should reserve it for yourselves. Never share it with strangers. Let your wife be a fountain of blessings for you. Woo! Did y'all hear that? Let your wife be a fountain of blessings for you and let your husband be a spring of good fresh water. We just, we just go pollute, pollute the water just pollute the water, the springs, all, just everybody had some of the springs. It says she, verse 19, she is a loving deer, a graceful doe. Let her breast satisfy you always. May you always be captivated by her love. Guys, this is something we got to pray over marriages that, Lord, take us back to this, to where we we got eyes only for one. <laughs> you said not polluted water. <laughs> no, water's polluted. Be captivated by my son. By a immoral. Why be captivated my son by a immoral woman? Guys, this is so scary because, again, it's talking about that immoral woman. She done broke up homes. She done broke up marriages. She done destroyed children. She done destroyed, she done destroyed people's health. She done gave folks the venereal diseases. She done done all type of things in this saying, why be captivated, my son, by an immoral woman? Why let her destroy your life and your family? You need discernment. You need discernment. Verse 20. Welcome, Marissa. Come on in. We are in Proverbs chapter 5, verse 20. Why be captivated, my son, by an immoral woman or fondle the breast of a promiscuous, promiscuous woman? For the Lord sees clearly what a man does, examining every path he takes. And an evil man is held captive by his own sins. They are the ropes that catch and hold him. He will die for lack of self-control. Come on in here and listen to me. It said he will die from a lack of self-control. Now remember we just talking to he. We don't know he and she. Because you can't control that lust. Because, come on, this is why we got to use uh, uh, discernment and this is why we need wisdom and let me tell you where it start it start when that little naked thing go across your TV screen or when they start uh, intertwining naked scenes into your favorite TV show I, you got to turn the channel I, I'm not watching that no more why because it's a seed that just got planted and the next thing you know you at work and next thing you know you you, you lusting now you looking at your co-workers now you look at it what's wrong like what, what's why you all focus over the night that, that's because you stayed on your TV show watching all them naked commercials and all them little the, it, it see it just that's why I say it's smooth. It's smooth. It just slide in on in on, on you. You don't even realize it hits you till you start lusting over somebody else. Now you're like, where did that come from? Now you're hinting over here. And then now you done had an affair when it was just a conversation. I don't even know what happened. I don't know how I got there. <laughs> we don't know how we got there. Because <laughs> it started with a seed. 
this is why it said you need discernment. You need wisdom. You need discipline. You need self-control. He said, and if you don't have self-control, he said he will die for the lack of self-control. He will be lost because of, because of his great foolishness. And let me tell you where we get foolish at. Because sometimes we put so much confidence in our own flesh. And we're like, oh, I'm good. I'm strong. Uh, I don't, that don't bother me. I'm past that. You never pass the seed being sown. The devil is cunning. He is crafty. And verse, verse 23 said he would die for lack of self-control. He would be lost because of his great foolishness. Look at, look at your footnote. It said God never intended marriage to become boring, lifeless, and dull. Sex is a gift God gives to married people for their mutual enjoyment. Real happiness comes when we decide to find pleasure in the spouse God has given us and to commit ourselves to meeting that person's needs. The real danger is not in doubting that God knows and cares for us. We then may resent his timing and carelessly pursue sexual pleasure without his blessings. Woo! Proverbs, 20, Proverbs 6, the lessons for daily life. Proverbs 6, the lessons for daily life. I'm going to get out of there, Therese. I'm going to just go on and get out of there, right? Proverbs chapter 6. It said, my child, if you have put up security for a friend's debt or agreed to guarantee the debt of a stranger if you have trapped yourself by your agreement and are caught by what you said follow my advice and save yourself for you have placed yourself at your friend's mercy now swallow your pride go and beg to have your name erased Verse 4, don't put it off. Do it now. Don't rest until you do. Save yourself like a gazelle escaping from a hunter, like a bird fleeting from a net. Verse 6, take a lesson from the ants. You lazy bones, learn from their ways and become wise. Though they have no prince, or governor, or ruler to make them work. They labor hard all summer, gathering food for the winter. But you lazy bones, how long will you sleep? When will you wake up? A little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Scarcity will attack you like an armed Robert, Robert, this and this is always a good parable here. Um, this parable about the ants, because if you never watch ants, like you can literally watch ants and just really get a revelation because they, I mean, they are busy, they will teamwork, they will drag food. I mean, they and, and so it's just talking about you know look at the ants and so they're comparing this whole parable to being lazy and comparing it to looking at the way ants move verse 12 said what what are worthless and wicked people like they, they are constant liars signaling their deceit with a wink of the eye a nudge of the foot or the wiggle of fingers their perverted hearts plot evil and they constantly stir up trouble. But they will be destroyed suddenly, broken in an instant beyond all hope of healing. There are six things the Lord hates. No, seven things he detests. Verse 17, haughty eyes, a lion tongue, hands that kill the innocent, a heart that plots evil, Feet that race to do wrong, a false witness who pours out lies, a person who sows discord in the family, 
And did you notice all these things that it said he detests? They are things that will destroy people. Did you look at that? Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that kill, the innocent, a heart that plots evil, feet that race to do wrong, and false witnesses who pours out lies, and a person who will sow discord in a family. Like, those things are destructive. Destructive. Verse 20. He said, my son, obey your father's commands and don't neglect your mother's instructions. Keep their words always in your heart. Tie them around your neck. And when you walk, their counsel will lead you. When you sleep, they will protect you. When you wake up, they will advise you. For their command is a lamp and their instructions is a light. Their corrective discipline is the way to life. And I don't know about you, but there is some things that my grandmother instilled in me when I was a little girl. <clears throat> and I, I consider myself being growing up in a household of strict discipline. Like, you know, you weren't allowed to talk back. You weren't allowed to smack your lips. You weren't allowed to, you know, be sitting in the room with a whole bunch of grown folks talking. You wasn't allowed, you, everything, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. You got disciplined by the neighbors. If the neighbors seen you doing something wrong, they whooped you and took you home and you got another whooping. So, you know, so we, <laughs> we came up under some strict discipline, right? But. And then even in when it came to church, you know, we came up under strict discipline. Like, you're not going to chew gum in church. You're not going to walk down the aisles while the preacher is praying, while the preacher is praying. You're not going to be talking while service is going on. You ain't going to be moving while the word is being preached. You got to use the bathroom. You better go before church because you ain't going during the word of God. You know, and it was just that. And you're going to get on your knees and you're going to be on that altar and you're going to pray. And you're going to prayer service and you're going to Tuesday prayer band service. And, you know, and so I just remember a lot of things being instilled into me as a kid, the ways of the Lord, like, you know, being respectful and honoring elderly people. And I don't care how wrong my mother could be. I would never disrespect an adult. I don't care how wrong they will be. I will walk away before I will ever get disrespectful with another adult or an elder that's older than me. I will take the wrong. I will humble myself. And guess what? I taught those principles to my kids. I, I don't care what your teacher did. I don't care what the lady said to you. You come tell me and then I will go talk to her. And then I, I will go and we'll go deal with this the right way. But you, you better not have gotten smart. You better not have, you, you know, and so there's just principles that you just carry on and you don't forget them. And then you train them to your children. And it says, so when it goes and says, like, when you walk in their counsel, he said, I will lead you when you sleep. They will protect you. When you wake up, they will advise you. And it said, for their command is a lamp and their instructions is a light. Their corrective discipline is the way to life. And I thank God today, the way I was raised, I thank God for my discipline. Didn't like it then, but I thank God for it. Because now when we look at these kids nowadays, uh, they so disrespectful, they so dismissed. And so we got, we still got the opportunity to instill those things into our grandchildren and to uh, other little children that's in the church and other kids that's around us, we get to be mama and them and the neighbor and them that and the neighbor that took me to church. And we now, now we get to be that person that we get to be uh, uh, the Queen Wales that was down the street that uh, went and grabbed you and took you to Sunday school and set you around the table and taught you taught you about Jesus. Now we get that opportunity to sow that seed back into the culture. So that. That word is still a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your pathway. It's still today a lamp, right? So when you think, I mean, all things going on, those little wisdom that grandma gave you, they light up 
and you be like, I remember, I remember what mama said. I remember what grandma taught me. I, I remember my mom always taught me never to do this. Those things we are still living out, they are a light unto your pathway. It is the way to life. It will keep you from the immoral woman, from the smooth tongue of a promiscuous woman. Don't lust for her beauty. Don't let her cop a coy glance seduce you. For a prostitute will bring you to poverty. But sleeping with another man's wife will cost you your life. Can a man scoop a flame into his lap? and not have his clothes catch on fire? Can he walk on hot coals and not blister his life, his feet? In other words, what it's saying is, if you play with fire, you're gonna get burnt. If you play with fire, you're gonna get burnt. If you dibble and dabble in this sin, it's gonna catch up with you. If you commit adultery, you gonna have to answer to God. It may feel good, and you may have snuck and you thought you got away with it, but you gonna have to answer to God. So He says, "Can we walk on hot coals and not blister our feet?" So is it with the man who sleeps with another man's wife? He who embraces her will not go unpunished. Excuses might be found for a thief who steals because he is starving. But if he is caught, he must pay back seven times what he stole. Even if he has to sell everything in his house. But the man who commits adultery is an utter fool. For he destroys him. So not only guys, we talking about not only is he a fool, but it's almost like he commits a sin against his own body. Like you commit sin against your own body. You take away the innocence and the purity and the modesty of your own body and you become filth. Just polluted waters. Muddy Springs, Sloppy Joe. <laughs> I said Sloppy Joe. Just, it said, for he destroys himself. Verse 33, he will be wounded and disgraced. Look at that. He will be wounded and disgraced. His shame will never be erased. For the woman's jealous husband will be furious and he will show no mercy when he takes revenge. He will accept no compensation nor be satisfied satisfied with a payoff of any size. So it's saying, in other words, not only do you disgrace yourself, but it's saying this is a mistake that can never be erased because this is a this basically is a grievance against another man. This is a disrespect against another man. This is dishonorable to this woman. It's dishonorable to you. It's a disgrace. Uh, it's a pollution of yourself. It's, it, it's, again, it's spreading yourself thin. I know this culture has taught us all different type of things, but keep yourself pure. <laughs> yourself pure and with modesty and with everything that you do fight off the lust of the flesh guard your eyes guard your heart guard your mind guard your soul why and this is why we was talking about yesterday if you missed yesterday's bible study we did emotional emotionally healthy discipleship course and we were still talking about rejecting this culture you are gonna have to reject this culture with everything that's in you, you're going to have to reject and rebel against this culture. Everything that is trying to put into us and the, and, and, and the world love using the media as a sliding scope just to 
slide, innocently slide things into your life. But it said, you're going to have to reject this culture because this is not your home. We just pass them through here. We don't belong to this place. So uh, there's some detachments that we need to do because along here, we're trying to acquire stuff. We're trying to be successful. That's that successism and that great ism. And we want to be like the world. And we're trying to acquire everything that the world got. And, we, and we're trying to build and we're trying to be great. And we're trying to do all these other things. And, and it says, you're going to have to detach yourself from this stuff. You're going to have to reject and rebel against this stuff in order to stay with Jesus. Because he said, you can't have us both. You can't have, you can't be in love with God and with money. You can't have us both. Cold and hot water can't flow out the same fountain. You're going to have to be either cold or hot. You can't have us. So we're going to have to learn how to Lord, I don't want to prostitute myself. I don't want to prostitute myself. I want to be the bride of Christ. And when you come back for me, I want my garments to be pure. I want my garments to be white. I don't want my dress all stained up with spaghetti sauce and all kind of stuff because because I've been playing in all kind of water and, and springs and dirty and I'm just I'm a prostitute myself to everything because I didn't guard my eyes I didn't guard my heart I flirted with too many things I was tempted with too many things and I didn't have discernment so father tonight we thank you for the wisdom of your word Father, tonight I pray, God, that you will help us walk out the strategies for effective living. Father, we read tonight it begins with wisdom. And so, Father, we come to you and we thank you for the wisdom that you provide us. Lord, help us to grab a hold of wisdom. Help us to cry out for wisdom. Help us, Lord, to lean into you for guidance and direction. And Father, just help us, Father to deal with and bring this, this body under control. Help us to be able to tame our eyes and tame our mind and tame our tongue. And Lord, bring, let us help us to discipline this body and bring it under the obedience of Christ. Father, we want to do your will. We want to walk in purity, pureness of mind, pureness of heart, pureness of thought. And we want to do all things pleasing in your sight. God, we want you to be glorified on the night. So, Father, woo, help us to walk this out in day-to-day, moment-by-moment, practical living, emotional thought, emotional health. And God, we say, you get all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And amen. Remember, guys, that tomorrow we will not be reading on Friday. We will tune in at 7 o'clock p.m. with the Bethel Fellowship uh, prayer. This will be all of our churches coming together to pray uh, from different regions. And so uh, we will tune in at 7 o'clock on Journey Through the Word. And so we hope to see you at 7 o'clock to join in prayer with us. Uh, as we come together and pray for our nation. All right, so we will see you tomorrow at seven and then we will join you back here Monday for Journey Through the Word. All right, God bless you all. We love you. See you tomorrow at seven o'clock p.m.